Hi, I'm Libby Gustin, and welcome to my kitchen. My friend Mia's here, and she's learning how to set up a sustainable kitchen. So what that means is how we use the food, how we dispose of it, it's gonna be better for us. It's gonna be better for the environment. So one of the most simple ways to get a lot of nutrients, fresh produce, and whole grains is with soups. It's the most simple thing simple. to do too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you gotta have a certain ingredients on hand to make that really right. easy to do. So I always make sure I have some fresh cream in my kitchen okay. and I always make sure I have some broth. And this is bone broth. Bone broth? <laughs> what is bone broth? I've heard of chicken broth. Right, it, it's chicken broth but it's even more. It's chicken broth that has been made with the bones from the chicken. So after oh, I pulled all the meat off okay. and you've got all the stuff that you normally would throw away. Does it have more nutrients in the bone? Absolutely, it's gonna get the collagen, you're gonna get glucosamine, you're gonna get okay. chondroitin. Things that are good for our intestines, good for our skin, good for our bones and our joints. <laughs> in fact, at the store the other day I saw a supplement and it was almost forty dollars to get wow. all of those things and i think we just throw those chickens yeah. away all we gotta do is throw yeah. them in a pot put it in a crock pot so you don't even have to be around while yeah. it's cooking and then you have a freezer full of broth that's really good for you mm -hmm. um and you know what i like is if i'm getting a cold when it's cold season yeah. i can just pull that broth out and make a really simple chicken, chicken soup. soup yeah it's gonna boost my immune system give me a lot of nutrients and it's gonna be easy okay. and that really matters <laughs> so what do you say let's make some chicken yeah. soup so to make the chicken soup, first thing is one pot. Okay, so that's good. really one easy, pot. simple, not much to clean up. The first thing I'm gonna do is put the uh, broth in okay. and just let it start warming up. And to make it more healthy, I'm gonna use a whole grain. So today I'm gonna use farro. What is that? Farro is an Italian ancient grain. So it's got, it's gonna be a little more chewy than rice. So it's okay. gonna be a little more hearty, which I think works great. Is it soup. this one right here? And that is it, if you'll hand that to me. I soaked it already. So I removed the phytic acid. I soaked it in water and vinegar okay. for oh, vinegar. Uh, 12 hours. And then, so it's not cooked. And I can put this one in not cooked because it doesn't absorb the liquid. Whereas rice is gonna absorb the liquid. Right. Then I'm not gonna have any soup left. Why, but for Why vinegar? Vinegar because it's helping remove uh, the phytic acid, which is a anti-nutrient for us that's on all seeds. Oh, okay. And so if yeah. I soak it, it'll help make take most of that off. And oh. so it's gonna make me um, absorb the iron and the zinc and the minerals that are in the farro. Okay. Otherwise, I may not absorb as much of them. So that needs to cook about 40 minutes okay. um, because just... the whole grain. So I'm just gonna let it cook in the soup. Just saves me some time. You can, can pre-cook it, but then I have an extra pot. Right. So when I don't need a pot, make it simple. Okay. <laughs> so once that's cooked, we'll come back in about 40 minutes and I wait to add my vegetables okay. so that they're fresh. Mm -hmm. The farro is ready, okay. so you can just see if it's a little tender instead of okay. chewy yeah. and then you know it's ready. So then I'm gonna add the chicken next so that it gets warm, but the chicken's already cooked. I just took a whole chicken breast, cooked it, and then I put it in little bite sizes so that it's a nice, every time you take a bite, you'll get some of the chicken. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna add that in, and I just want it to heat up. I don't wanna overcook it, because then it gets chewy. And how long do you have to keep that in? I usually let it, since the soup has already been kind of simmering, so it's at a really high temperature, just about five or 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, right, because it's already cooked. Yeah, okay. so I'm just letting the heat get through each piece of meat. And then um, last, we're gonna add the vegetables, because any of your water-soluble vitamins in your vegetables, when they get cooked too much, you lose them. Okay. So if we add them fresh at the end, they're gonna have more nutrients in it for us. And I'll often do that even if I make a big pot, right before I serve it, I'll add some vegetables mm. so that you get some of those water-soluble vitamins. So I guess next we're gonna add the broccoli because that takes a little longer to cook, and the carrots. Okay, a little red peppers, a little Swiss chard. So I like leeks because I just like the depth of flavor you get from a leek, and I'm not pre-cooking it, so it'll add some of that flavor to the broth. It looks so colorful. See, that would took like no time. Yeah. And now we're gonna have this really, really rich soup and it's gonna be pretty hearty because of the farro in there and the chicken. So you can see the soup is cooked mm -hmm. and- It looks great. You know, the great thing about this is it's a complete meal because we've got all the vegetables, we've got our protein in it. Right. 
but you can also make a soup as a side dish or as a side vegetable. So I love making vegetable soups. Vegetables. Do you use a vegetable broth? Yeah, I use a chicken broth. You can use a vegetable okay. broth, but you use less broth because, as you see, we'll make it. We're going to actually work with this asparagus today. Okay. I just got it this morning. And so one of the things about asparagus that a lot of people don't realize, it's a more vulnerable vegetable, meaning it breaks down really fast. Okay. So you want to eat it within two days of getting it. Oh, wow. So I got it today. Let's go ahead and make a soup yeah. out of it. Um, and you notice how I'm storing it in a, yeah, I noticed that. Like, a like a flower. Yeah, <laughs> and I did. I just cut the ends off and you store it in water. It's going to last longer. It's going to be crispier because okay. it tends to get limp in the normal way people store it. Um, also, with asparagus, have you ever gotten that really chewy end? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very picky about making sure I remove that. Okay. So when you're going to, it's really easy. You see how it's not really, there's no flex, there's no flex, yeah. boom. Oh. <laughs> That's how you know how to do it. Although, you can just kind of do it on the board. It snaps right off. Okay. And then I'm going to put those in my compost. Okay. And then this one's, and they're not all the same, so this one's a little bit less. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to do when I make soup, um, this is the most flavorful part of your the asparagus top, yeah. is the top. It's also the prettiest. Mm -hmm. So I usually will cut those off and set them aside and not puree them as I make the soup. And I'm just going to add those in the oh, end as a whole soup. Mm -hmm. So we'll just finish prepping the vegetables. We're just going to remove the tips, remove the tough ends. And then we're just going to cut it in little smaller pieces. And then we're going to go over to the stove and turn all this into a soup. <laughs> So when I'm making soup with a vegetable soup, I usually start by sauteing an onion or a leek, and I'm doing leeks right now, which I've done. And then I'm gonna add a dry cooking sherry. And I'm gonna also add, go ahead and add the stalks so that they can take on some of the flavor of the sherry. I'm just gonna cook it, can you smell it? So you wanna, co you wanna cook it till that kind of dissipates. You're gonna cook off the alcohol part of the sherry, and then we're just left with that flavor. All right, so once I, I smell kind of the, not the alcohol, but mm -hmm. that depth of yeah. flavor, the I'm gonna add two cups of chicken broth. And how long do you usually cook it for? Is there a certain amount of time? Asparagus cook, just... it depends on your vegetables, but because we're working with asparagus, asparagus cooks in a few minutes. It's a okay. really That's easy great. cooked vegetable. So as soon as the broth gets hot, the asparagus is gonna be cooked. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's almost ready. The broth is starting to bubble and the color of the asparagus is slightly changed. So I know it's ready and I wanna make a pureed soup. So I'm gonna take all of this and pour it into the Vitamixer and blend it up really well. So once I pureed the asparagus, I'm gonna pour it back in the pot because we're gonna add a few more ingredients okay. before it's ready. I'm gonna add a little bit of cream. You can do, again, I always like to use a raw cream so that I have the vitamin A, right. the vitamin B, all the good nutrients in it. Um, today I'm gonna use a little mixture. I'm gonna use a little bit of cultured cream and a little bit of a raw cream, um, just to make it a little thicker. Excellent, and then add a little bit of the salt and pepper. And again, this is where you can have fun. I usually add a fresh herb. Today I've got oregano, sometimes I'll use thyme. Um, you know, and it depends on the vegetable you're mixing it with. Smell it, ooh. Yeah. Mm, that smells it's really good. Cream. Okay, and so I'm just gonna heat it long enough for that cream to get warm. We're not gonna, we don't have to cook it anymore. And then once it's done, which I think we're ready. So once I'm gonna put it in the bowls uh -huh. and I'm gonna take the asparagus tips, I'm gonna put those in the bowl and then pour it over there because they'll cook just like that. Right. So you know what, when I'm making soups, I'd love to have crackers with yeah, them. Yeah, that's the best combination. They go together, yeah. it's like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. <laughs> so I make them actually. So you that, make it yourself. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of oils go in the ones you buy on the shelves. And this way I know it's all fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. I spent all that time making a good fresh soup. That's what makes it And crackers. look, it's three mm -hmm. ingredients. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. So why not? So I have a whole grain flour here. Mm -hmm. You can use any flour. I like the whole grain because you get more nutrients. Sometimes right. I'll use an almond flour. So if you're gluten free, you could use almond okay. flour. This is important. The butter, you want to make sure it's cold because that's what helps creates the pastry 
texture that you're gonna get from the crackers. And it gets warm, it starts getting too runny and you don't develop the right kind of dough. So, and I just cube it because it makes it easier to so, mix. Yeah. You could put the whole thing in, but then I'm gonna have to work harder <laughs> mixing it. Um, and then I'm also going to add in, this is sesame seeds and some salt and pepper. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna add some fresh rosemary. So you just add all your ingredients in. And just mix it together. And then just mix it all together really good. And then just kind of let the butter cubes kind of roll in there and get all mixed in. So a pastry cutter is gonna make the job a lot easier to cut the butter in. You can do it with a knife and a fork, but it's a lot easier because right. this just, you can just, just go right on it, yeah. And you're really, the goal is you don't want to see any chunks of butter. You want to make just a nice granular little dough. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get this all well mixed. Okay, so you can see now how we're getting more of a, like a solid little mass yeah, of yeah. dough. So now we can add a little bit of water to bring it all together. And does that have to be cold as well? It helps because if it's warm, the butter gets melted and then you your texture changes okay. so it's highly recommended to use and it's two to three tablespoons again I'm going to pour it in slowly and see because it's not always exactly two or exactly three so it's somewhere in between yeah you're going to kind of look for a certain texture of dough just add a little bit in you don't want any loose flour so you want it to just kind of make one big mass like a paste almost like a very thick thick yeah a thick dough really Okay, now if I mash this, it's going to make a nice dough. I can see. So it's yeah. ready for me to put it out and kind of roll it out on the surface. Um, and because I have to mash it, I'm going to put gloves on so I don't get it under my fingernails. Ooh, it really looks like dough now. See? Yeah. yeah. It, it's hard to tell when you look at it all broken up that it yeah. was actually going to make the dough, but wow. it does. And so then I'm just going to put a little flour down so it doesn't stick when and I roll it out. The it's the same. Yeah. So if I was using almond flour, I would just put an almond flour down. So, and I usually start by just pressing it down with my hand first because it kind of cracks on the end. So you kind of start making your shape with your hand as much as you can. This looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually. It kind of looks like you're playing with sand. It's like Play-Doh, you know? <laughs> and you can do them whatever thickness you want. I usually like them a little thin so that they're not as like much. Like crackery. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a word. So, yeah, well, it is now. <laughs> as I roll it, some of the times the ends will crack a little bit because you don't have a lot of moisture in it. That's what makes it a cracker. So I just mash it together with your hands as you're shaping it. So once the dough is the thickness that you want, which that looks like a nice good sized cracker, all you have to do is cut it and put it on a baking sheet. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna bake it at 325, usually about 12 minutes, and then you're gonna flip it over so you cook the other side, and it's usually about six minutes, but sometimes maybe eight. You're just looking for a nice crisp brown coloring okay. to the cracker. Sometimes it depends And they're, it's really easy to cut. I usually will just kind of trim my edges so that I can get like a nice. Clean the edge off. I'll bake those too, but you can use them as like croutons on your salad yeah. or something. <laughs> and then you have a nice little square crackers here. So you can see the crackers, what they look like when they're finished. Mm -hmm. I actually made some with the almond flour too, so you'd get right. to experience both. These are, the almond. these are the almond crackers, and these are the ones we did with the sesame seeds and the whole wheat. Yeah. And I also added some lemon juice to the asparagus soup. Mm -hmm. Usually with a, a vegetable soup, I'm gonna add some kind of citrus. Yeah. Because it adds vitamin C, which doesn't flavor, hold up well course. cooking, and it gives flavor, <laughs> nutrients and flavor. Who can yeah. go wrong? Sometimes I'll even add passion fruit. So just play with whatever citrus you have around or whatever juicy veg, uh, fruit you have. And the chicken soup is ready. You can see all the colors and how hearty it is. Yeah. So just make sure you keep yourself stocked with uh, some kind of broth. It can be vegetable broth, chicken broth, and then it's really easy with whatever fresh vegetables you bring in to make a variety of soups.